Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I am so excited to do this video. It's of the 7th Citadel. The upcoming Kickstarter should be live as of the airing of this video, uh, from the same company, Serious Pulp, and with a lot of the same mechanics as the previous 7th Continent, one I really enjoy. Now, a few quick disclaimers for this one. First of all, as always, we receive no compensation for our Kickstarter content. I'm sending this prototype on to another reviewer after I finish filming and reviewing it. Secondly, everything you see is a prototype, so it can and probably will change. And third, and I don't think I've ever done this for a Kickstarter before, but this is a single introductory scenario that they sent me, and I wanted to go in with the most honest, real reaction to it possible, so I have not played at all. I've read the rules a whole bunch, I've played Seventh Continent, which shares a lot of mechanics, so uh, hopefully I'll get through smoothly, but I have no idea how this is going to go or even what awaits me, so hopefully we'll have some excitement together. But before we get into the playthrough, if you like the content at the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us on Patreon, listening to our podcast on Sundays, checking out the conversations on our Discord and Slack channels, and of course hit that subscribe button to see all our upcoming videos. So we're going to get into this introductory scenario, a new beginning, and see what it's all about, but first let's figure out our characters. So the prototype they sent me comes with four characters, and each with their own unique deck this time. If you've played Seventh Continent, there was kind of a big shared action deck that you would just add the couple of unique cards for your character to, but now you get decks for each person. We've got uh, Cassock and Brooks, who both look a little bit tough, and Arthen, who looks like she's good at running, and Denholm, who looks, uh, I don't know, learned, studious? So I'm going to go with a bit of brawn, a bit of brain, sort of what seems like it might be a nice mix. I don't know, though I haven't played. And you then get to customize each of your characters with five cards each from among the 20 on offer here. And you can technically mix and match, but they suggest in the rules for your first few games that you use all five cards of a given type. So you'll see all of these have a fist icon and I assume are focused on kind of fighting skills. This one looks like leadership, this one's like arcane magic, and this one is a stealth and sneaking around. So I think uh, Brooks being a fighter, Denholm being an arcane master, it seems like I'm playing to their strengths there. Uh, we'll go with that and see how we do. And setup is as simple as shuffling their decks together and of course organizing all of the cards. You'll see those soon. But you don't start with any cards in your hand unless the scenario says you do. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, each of them has a card you can start with for free. So I may take a 175 and I may take a 225. Uh, heck yes, I'm going to do it. So again, if you've seen Seventh Continent, the way the cards work will be familiar. Clearly I have a fairly small subset of what's possible here. And for many of these cards, you would have multiple copies, but it looks like I've just got one of each for these characters. So we'll see what's on the back in a second. So let's see what we have for Brooks first. Your cellmates fear you, and not only because of your temper. Something radiates from you. Something that even you can feel on occasion. It is like a strength that occasionally explodes in violent rage. This is probably why, at the end of an exhausting day in the garden, you remain more energetic than the others, whose stooped figures and emaciated faces bear the marks of this life of hard labor. Ooh, a dormant strength. And uh, this symbol means I can't trade this to another character, so this is all mine. A childhood memory flashes through your mind. While you were out searching for food, an old building collapsed and a heavy beam fell on your friend Malik. A feeling of panic gripped you, but what you initially thought was fear was actually something quite different. Before the astonished faces of the other children in your gang, you managed to pick up the imposing length of wood, allowing your friend to escape. There is a hidden strength lying dormant within you, begging to be set free. Now let's see, during the result step of an action, if you count seven or more icons, that's icons of any type, uh, you'll see on the action cards you'll draw, they'll often uh, show icons in the corner, so this would have to be a big action indeed. Take a 218 card during the consequence step and banish this. Very cool. It's a little quest that's personal to me. All right, now Denim's turn, or Denholm. Not quite sure how to say that. A new inmate recently arrived at the Citadel, and the imbecile forgot to wear his leather gloves, scratching himself on the spine of a belligerent. It took only a few hours for his hand to become completely necrotic. From your bunk, you can see him out of the corner of your eye, writhing in agony, powerless. His breath is shallow and his face gaunt as he battles the feverish hallucinations. Poor lad, so young. Filled with pity, you decide to offer a few words of comfort. As you approach, you notice a pendant dangling loosely around his sweat-drenched neck. Blood ties. You would recognize that necklace anywhere. Impossible! 
You gave it to your youngest daughter shortly before she was buried alive. Interrogating the dying man, he raspingly whispers that he met a red-haired girl with freckles in exchange a hair he had recently caught for her necklace. Your heart races. Could your beloved Cassia still be alive? You remove the necklace and quickly slip it into your apron pocket. The young man will have no need for it where he is going. Oh man, this is already so cool. <laughs> So this one is a mechanic that was also in Seventh Continent. Uh, some uh, events or effects I see will have uh, this symbol on it. And then I'll add this number to get a unique result. So like if the card would tell me to draw card 80, but it has this symbol, I can draw card 97 instead. And I don't know, maybe find this guy's daughter. Very cool. But enough about our characters. Let's get to the story of the game. The Collapsing Lands. The Kel Protectorate has been at war with a fearsome enemy, the Burrowers, for the last 70 years. Controlled by a mysterious individual, these elongated worms tirelessly dig underground tunnels, causing swaths of territory to sink into the bowels of the earth. After years of helplessness, the Protectorate finally found the Necrodruids, the only defense against the Scourge. These men and women have rejected sacred principles of their order, drawing on blood and forbidden incantations to create the monstrous plants to combat the burrowers. In the citadels, the Necrodruid's power centers, you grow and tend to the abominations developed within. Working as gardener slaves, you wish that a fatal accident or death by exhaustion would relieve you of your endless toil. Today's world has clearly changed since the days of our forefathers. The collapsing lands are choked in gloom and dust belched up by the burrowers. The horrific plant creatures created to protect you have spread, often uncontrollably, and now threaten humanity as much as the burrowers. Despite the efforts of what remains of Kel to put an end to their schemes, the mysterious controller of the worms and his brainwashed henchmen are nowhere to be found. Alright, I'm liking the world building already. Let's uh, get to the beginning of our narrative. How long have you been in the Citadel? You have lost track of time. The absence of a door at the entrance to your cell and the apparent freedom with which you move within the tower occasionally leads you to forget that you are nothing more than a prisoner. Awaking to a cold morning bathed in pale light, another long day of hard labor awaits you at the sacred grove. One more day added to your interminable sentence and one less left of your life. Who knows? Perhaps this one will be your last. Suppressing a shudder, your mind drifts to thoughts of the apprentice gardener. His silly antics were a welcome source of amusement not so long ago, but now his mangled left arm, torn from its sockets, is fertilizing the plants he used to tend. The reckless boy had been clearing the ground next to a sardonite, mistaking it for a rose of torment, without seeking assistance from a gardener. It had been drilled into you that the abominations created by the Necrodruids protect the citadel and the remains of the Kel Protectorate from the burrowers. The belief was that one day they would help you win the war that has wrought chaos and decimated the once green and populous landscape for more than 70 years. You have little choice but to place your belief in the stories, since you have not seen the outside world since your imprisonment. Hey, enough daydreaming! The ground trembles and rumbles more than usual! A sudden violent blast throws you to the floor, shaking the citadel of the necrodruid Ninny Desires to its very foundations. The southeast wall, with its dozens of cells, is torn asunder. Screaming prisoners can be heard over the thunderous collapse as they plummet to the chasm below. Somewhere beyond the clouds of dust and the creaking piles of debris, additional explosions and streaks of strangely colored lightning flash across the sky. Amidst the acrid smoke burning your eyes and throat, you can see the faint outlines of the other prisoners rushing out of your cell. A shrill ringing fills your ears and your heart beats so fast that you feel as if it might burst. You have no idea what just happened, but your instinct bellows at you to get out of here as soon as possible. Gritting your teeth, you tense your muscles and start running. All right, yikes, here we go. Uh, I guess we're just trying to survive. Take a new Citadel leaflet. Oh, that's uh, this little thing. We won't need that yet, I don't think. Divide 30 life points equally among your characters, taking part. Um, I think... I think I'll say we both have 15. Why not? We draw two cards from our action deck. Nice. And then take 14, read the text on the back, and place it into play to begin forming the board. Place each character's figure on that card, and you may not save the game in progress. So this is a one-off survival mission, and we don't read this until we get to an epilogue. All right, here we go. So we've got Denom with his necklace. And he's got Second Wind, not a great one to draw early. It's a resting card to get a bunch of cards uh, back into your deck so you can do more stuff. And At the Double, which lets me move very far. Again, not a great card to start with, and also lets me escape from a combat I don't want to be in. 
And each character can only have up to four cards in their hand at a time, plus uh, objects, but we'll get to that as we find some. Meanwhile, Brooks has her dormant strength, and she also has second win and at the double, because I just realized those were Brooks's cards. See the uh, B there? I switched deck, so let's uh, fix that quickly. So Denholm has uh, Abnegation, one of his special mystic ones. Okay, so he can uh, discard four cards, get any icon he wants. That's uh, not that great, okay. And Foresighted, I'm going to shuffle a card I revealed into my action deck instead of discarding it. That's pretty cool to uh, keep a good card around. Like it. And let's not forget they each have 15 life for now. All right, I'm going to read card 14. Your cell measure is barely 15 feet across. The other prisoners are shoving each other to get out before the upper floor collapses into your cell. On the other side, the room opens into the void and the chaos of the garden below. A definitive final exit for your fellow inmates who have been pushed to the brink by exhaustion and despair. So for those who are familiar with Seventh Continent, this won't seem too different, but if you've never seen that game before, uh, these are cards you can move around on, and they'll often have arrows showing directions you can go, but this one doesn't have any to begin with. But they'll also often have actions on them, and they'll show what type of action they are, which means nothing in and of itself except giving you a hint as to what it's about, but uh, it could react with cards you're holding and such. Like this seems to be, what is that, kind of like a treasure or a box? I can uh, look out there or map my way a bit. And there we go, we're both on there. And to kind of go into the basics of the action system, because this is how the whole game runs, uh, the blue number here is how many cards I have to draw and discard from the top of my action deck, which is also kind of like my energy. And I'm looking for at least as many stars as you see here. So in this case, none of these cost me anything to do, so I guess I'll do all of them. So let's start out by looking at the item, and I do have to pick one active character each time I do something. So I will have uh, Denholm look at the item one, zero ten. Another tremor, stronger this time, violently shakes the citadel, bringing dirt and debris crashing down from the ceiling. The air is thick with dust, but you can make out a body buried under the rubble. Grunting with effort, you manage to pull it free. You recognize Ellen, a talkative but generous girl who had shared your cell for several years. She is unconscious, her brown hair thick with blood from a nasty gash on her forehead. Bending over her, you can hear the faint, regular sound of her breathing. So this is a special little event that will get put next to the card. You'll see the uh, number showing it. And it's a bit faint, but you can see the icon of the type of action we took to place this. And that just means that we can't take this action again because the card that's sort of represented is already out here. Okay, the other prisoners fled without a second thought. Will you carry Ellen away to safety or leave her to a gruesome fate? This is a strength check. We need uh, two cards from our deck, but we don't need any successes, so we'll automatically succeed at it. And that'll let her gently lift her unconscious body and hoist her over your shoulder. She's pretty heavy. And that'll give us card 11, and then we will replace this with a gold card of the same number. So uh, if we do this, the 10 will go away forever, and a 10 gold will go in its place, probably just showing that uh, she's not there anymore. Before we do anything else, let's save her. We'll let Brooks go. She's the stronger one, and she has second wind, which is kind of like a healing card. So she'll just discard two cards. Uh, we're not really caring about anything because these special abilities can only be used when they're in your hand. We're not looking for successes, although we would have one and a half here. Half stars you need to be able to combine with other cards. And the icons don't mean anything, so we're just done. So we're replacing the original card. A faint glimmer amidst the rubble catches your attention. Oh, cool. Immediately after this is revealed, take a 49 and a 16 card. And it's still uh, locking out that action for the rest of the game. But this goes into the uh, banish cards. We won't use it again. All right, so first we have Ellen's necklace. So this is an item. I guess uh, Brooks will be carrying it. It's got another special thing that could help us in certain situations. Oh, interesting. So we can use it. This is a special action with the necklace itself. We can draw two or more cards. We got to get two successes. And the chain means we can only use up to two cards out of all the ones we draw. And if we use it, we are filled with renewed energy. We get to keep one of the cards we drew. That's what the little hand means. And the active player returns a You Are Exhausted card. I haven't even seen those yet. Or it can give off a nasty heat, and we can have to banish it. And that is a necklace. A quick rule for Seven Citadel. You can't have more than three of the same keyword in any character's possession. So uh, Brooks is carrying this, but if Denholm had it, he can only get one more necklace before he would have to uh, throw one away if he got a fourth one. I know we got a hope, and this means it just kind of goes in our campaign set, and we just hang on to it for later. 
The thought of a hearty pull from a tankard of mead can sometimes raise your spirits, more than the promise of better days. Okay, so we can return this to unblock one of our hand cards. You'll see how blocking happens later. Or if we collect five hope cards, we can take a 99 card, which I'm guessing will level you up. That's how it was in Seventh Continent. So I'm going to put that to the side. And finally, lots of cards from this one action. You grit your teeth as the body over your shoulders grows ever heavier and your right arm begins to spasm. If only you could be sure that Ellen would survive her wound. Rocks smash on the floor, sending fragments flying across the room. It's high time you made a run for it. Unconscious Ellen. Again, I can't give this card to somebody else. Your body aches with fatigue. Uh, during the preparation step of an action you are involved in, you must select this. So I have to use this in every action I'm in. And it makes me ignore one success during the result step. Yikes. So I guess I'll hopefully have Denholm do this. If this is discarded or we take you are an injured card, banish this. And it's double cumbersome. So if I had two more cumbersome uh, keywords on my items, I'd have to drop something. Oh, well, then here, uh, Denholm, uh, you go ahead and do the map in the I-1. So we'll do the map first. Dozens of prisoners run past your cell. You are about to charge after them when a terrible crash deafens you. Tons of stone have dropped into the corridor, filling the space with thick, billowing dust. Wailing and cries for help echo through the corridor. And so you rush out of your cell after your fellow inmates. No matter what happens, that'll cost me one energy. Don't care about successes. And I'll turn this into a gold version and move myself there. That sounds like the dangerous way. Let's see what the right has to offer. You walk to the back of the cell and stand at the ledge above the void. Glancing down to the sacred grove in the center of the garden, a gust of wind nearly makes you lose your balance. Looking up, you are speechless at the scene unfolding in the distance. A gaping hole has been torn in the wall of the citadel, the interior reduced to rubble. Shouting voices, screams of agony, and the sound of rocks crashing to the floor ring out along the walls in a nightmarish cacophony. Oh, you are shocked by this terrible sight, but a spark of hope awakens in you. Freedom finally seems within reach, so long as you can escape this place in one piece. So we're going to take a 49 card, and if an involved character has a card with the keyword cumbersome, take a 17 card. But I didn't choose to have Brooks involved. I could have... Uh, even though I have an active character each turn, you can have other characters in the location become involved, but I was worried about her bringing the action down. So uh, let's uh, check just 49. And notice that there are four of these. Whenever you have multiple cards of the same number, you just draw one at random and put the rest uh, back in the box, waiting to maybe be drawn later. That's oh, another hope card. When all seems lost, you can either stare at the dark earth, littered with the shrouded dead, or you can raise the banner of hope and forge ahead through adversity. So I can return this to unblock. Yeah, same as the other one. Just has different uh, flavor text. All right, well, not much choice is there. We're going to have uh, Denholm do this one. So he'll just uh, spend one card. Doesn't care about successes. So here he's losing his little energy drain spell. And so I'm going to replace this with the gold copy of 15 and move Denholm there. See what we have to find. You enter the corridor that runs along the cells of the upper floor. The ceiling is collapsed on the north side, forever sealing access to that part of the citadel. Breathing heavily with your eyes streaming because of the thick dust, you make your way forward. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, so Denholm is there. So you'll see there are two numbers pointing to the side with these little gate symbols there. And what that means is those could eventually be locations I could move to. But with the gate symbol, I'm going to shuffle up all of these little exploration cards. And I'm going to put one of them face down next to each of these. I have to explore and have some kind of random thing happen before I can see what's actually in that direction. And note that these are, again, an action for whichever active character I choose to take. I'll flip it, and then usually something will happen we have to resolve immediately. But we don't want to leave Brooks behind, so how do we move? It's a basic action on everyone's card. And you'll see it's very simple. Uh, one energy, so you gotta discard one action card at least. You don't care how many successes you get. And a big thing, you get to keep the one card you discarded into your hand. That's, again, what the little hand with a one symbol means. So you're just adding to your hand, although you can only have four cards in your hand. So eventually you'll have to discard if you do it. And you get to move to an adjacent terrain card. So let's go ahead and do that. Brooks is getting a drop your guard, which can be used during a fight. It would let me keep an extra card if it has that uh, little red chain symbol, but I'd take two damage in doing so. So I would... Uh, Basically drop my guard to get a stronger attack on the enemy. And here we go. And since I didn't need any successes, uh, the whole carrying Ellen thing doesn't matter for this. All right, we can go west or south. And I mean, let's see. It looks like the main corridor kind of goes this way, whereas that seems to go into other cells. So let's explore here first, see if there's anybody else to rescue or any items. I'll have Denholm keep leading as long as uh, Brooks is carrying Ellen. So it's again a zero-zero action. I don't want to draw any extra cards. You can whenever you have a plus, but it'd be silly. 
Oh, do or die. There are two types of people. Those who survive through no doing of their own until Lady Luck decides to withdraw her blessing, and the others, those exceptional beings who pay no heed to what fate throws their way, pressing on at any cost without batting an eyelid. It's time to show everyone exactly which one you are. Okay, so it is a quest. When you read the epilogue, if players have a total of more than 20 life points, take two 99 cards and discard this, otherwise discard it. Okay, so uh, just a quest that I think can get us more level up cards. I'm pretty sure that's what 99s are. And right now we have 30 life points. Uh, what I haven't talked about yet is whenever your deck is empty, you can spend five life points to basically reshuffle it and have all your energy and actions available again. So again, if you've played Seventh Continent, there's no food in this one. Uh, you can just recharge your deck whenever you want by taking some damage. And now because I resolved that card, I'm going to add the card matching the actual number pointing to the left. The door in front of you leads to the room used to store the tools used to tend to the garden, and increase your chances of survival. Every day the overseer, a taciturn man with rather odorous breath, distributed the tools to the gardeners and ensured they were all returned in the same condition. The heavy door is double locked, which is hardly surprising. If prisoners had access to this room, they might use the tools for something other than gardening. Ooh, look at this check. So the red chain means even if we choose to draw like 20 cards, we can only use two of them for three successes. Uh, the door swings on its hinges with a creaking sound. We can get in there. The task is tougher than you imagined. If only you had the key or something to force the lock. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I'm not going to try that unless I can find an item. Now, if I'd taken the uh, stealth deck, there is a lock-picking card that would make that thing much easier. But uh, I didn't go for that. I went for brawn and magic. All right, Denim, I'm investigate again. Damnation! A dark marrow stands right in the middle of the passageway. It has spat its deadly seeds all over the place. If you value your feet, you should avoid stepping on even one of them. Okay, uh, count how many seeds lay on the ground and take the corresponding card. If you take the wrong card, so I'll see this icon will be visible on the back of the right card. You step on a seed and explode. Oh my, or it explodes. <laughs> I don't explode. Okay, how many seeds lay on the ground? Ah, uh, yikes. Four, seven, ten, thirteen... 17, 21, haha, <laughs> not counting those, those aren't on the ground. Let me check again, 5, 8, 10, 15, 20, 21. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's 21, let's find out. Oh, that's looking good. Now, if I hadn't seen this symbol, I wouldn't even resolve this. I would just uh, get the explosion damage. But yes, you pick your way through the seeds, making sure not to step on one of those explosive traps. After passing through the obstacle course, you breathe a sigh of relief. Okay, I get another hope card, nice. When danger lurks, paying attention to small details is often what distinguishes the living gardener from the composted one. <laughs> nice. And by the way, cards like this are discarded behind the past card divider when uh, they've been used. So you won't see the same exploration until you rest, and then things could come back up again. And let's see what kind of nugget of wisdom they have this time. He who dies after giving up has the consolation of having predicted his end accurately. <laughs> nice. You make your way down the corridor, leaning against the walls to avoid collapsing with each new tremor. It is as if you know every slab, having walked these halls for far too many years. At dawn to the garden and at nightfall exhausted back to your cell. Strangely, you feel a mix of worry and relief as you walk through this familiar setting. By the end of the day, there will likely be nothing left of this place. Alright, so we've got a new room to investigate and another place. Let's uh, slide our vision down. We're gonna have both characters move down here, of course, each getting a card. So Denim will get Specialty. So this means you can use it on that type of check. The uh, blank brown square means any check. When you must discard one hand card from your hand, you may shuffle it into your action deck instead and then discard this. So I can just use this whenever that would happen. And then uh, Brooks got the Art of War, which is only for combat. Counts as a fist or three fists if this is the only card you have in your hand, which other cards might allow me to use for attacking. That does give Denholm three cards and Brooks four. So if I don't use any soon, then the next time I move, I'll just be throwing a card away. All right, I'm a bit of an obsessive person for checking every little nook and cranny, even when it hurts me. So let's have a Denholm check this one. Ooh, two possibilities. I bet one is good and one is bad. You prepare to enter the cell when your nose picks up a stench that you know all too well. Your eyes dart around the room just to put your mind at rest. The branch of an enormous jack fig tree has fallen into the cell. Several of its fruits have burst on the floor, releasing a powerful musky fragrance that makes you nauseous. As you back out in search of fresher air, the heady smell fills your body and mind with unexpected vitality. Oh, nice. Okay, immediately after this is revealed, each character on the active player's terrain card may return their You Are Exhausted card. Uh, we don't have one, but that's cool. Now let's see. For each icon you take into account, plus two cards, it means you get them back from your discard pile. 
there's no check here, so I think that means we can apply that effect to any action we take in this space, maybe? But currently we have no discard, so let's keep pushing forward. Den home, explore. Another tremor shakes the edifice with a rumbling sound. The ceiling starts to crumble and debris rains down all around you. Uh-oh. So this is a forced check. That means I have to take it. So I can draw as many as I want. I'm looking for two stars. Uh, if I do it, I manage to scamper to safety, so I uh, just get to keep one of the cards I drew. And if not, a chunk of rock smashes you. I take a damage. So I don't want to commit too much here, because remember, five damage lets you reshuffle your entire deck. So one damage isn't too bad. I mean, two stars, I feel like I probably need at least three cards, but I would get one to my hand. Hmm. You know what? Denholm is old. I'm just going to say he doesn't dodge at all. I'm not even going to draw any cards. And, oh no, he's down to 14 life. Sorry, buddy. That's right, so what awaits us. A strange creature ambles aimlessly in the corridor. You slowly approach it with your palms open, showing that you mean it no harm. It seems startled and begins aggressively waving a jagged piece of wood in an attempt to strike you. What? Oh, look at you, you little jerk. All right, so we are having our first battle, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is a new thing to the system called a compound action. So we take this little d6 die, and we put it equal to the current star value here. And basically, on each of our turns, we can draw one or more cards, although the chain means we can only keep one of them and actually apply it. And each success we get will tick this down one. Once we get to zero successes, we'll get the success result here and move down to the second phase of the fight, where we can still only keep one card. We need to get four successes, and then we'll uh, change this into the gold version. And each time we try and fail, we'll suffer the consequence. So here we'll discard two cards from the top of our deck, but we'll get to keep one of them to our hand. In the second phase, he'll actually be damaging us each time we fail. And I did ask the designers about this, and I'm pretty sure they said that you can switch the active character after each attempt if you're in the same location. So again, with Brooks carrying uh, our friend, I'm not sure if she'll be better for fighting, but it's at least a thought to have. So now that we have our first real skill check, the first step is preparation. If you have any items that could affect the skill check, you have to say you're going to put them towards it. I don't. And Brooks could also use items to help me out. But for each one she used, she would have to block a card from the top of her deck, putting it underneath her character, which basically takes it entirely out of play until you use an effect to unblock it, which remember the hope cards can be discarded to do. Then I'll decide how many cards I want to draw. I'll draw them all. I'll uh, count successes, although in this case I can only count successes from one of the cards. And then finally we can use any uh, action cards in our hand to modify the results. But the only one I really have that would help out is a uh, four-sided, where if I draw a really good card, I can put it into my uh, deck again. So, yeah, this guy's going to be nasty. Let's have uh, Denholm draw two cards, even though he can only use one to make sure he gets at least one success. Or not make sure he gets at least one success. Yuck. Right, so Thoughts would let me keep a card I drew. And Blood Pact helps me with uh, magic actions, which I'm not doing right now, so I'll just uh, let both those go, I guess. So because I failed, I have to discard two cards from my deck, but I can keep one of them from my hand. Not focusing. Choose one card in your discard pile or action deck and add it to your hand, then discard it. That sounds nice. Oh, or drop your guard. That would let me keep two cards, but I'd take some damage. Yes, I think we'll want that. Now, I don't think I want to use this yet. I think I would rather use it when I'm uh, fighting him the second time because I have to discard it. So let's just do two cards again, and maybe I'll switch to Brooks at some point. I don't know. Okay, good. There we go. So I did get a hit on him. That goes down to two, but I still suffer the fail effect. So that gives me two more cards. Ah, that would have been good. Ooh, force field. Uh, it's too late for me to start the action. Actually, no, I guess it's not. I just realized this is not a forced action, so I could take, like, other actions in between. So yeah, sure. Let's uh, add this force field to my hand and see if I can use that to help me fight or something. At the double would let me run away from the guy, but note that it returns him to the deck, so I'd have to just face him again with his full health if I used it, so that'd be silly. All right, now I am at uh, five cards, so I have to discard something. Uh, that one doesn't seem to help too much, so let's just keep these. So let's pause for a second and try to cast the force field and just tire myself out more. I'm going to draw three cards and try to get two. And let's see. Ah, there we go. That'll be three. Perfect. Let's see, I get to keep one card and then take a 72 card. And actually, this doesn't go away, so I guess this is a spell I can use over and over again. So do I want to keep one of these? Okay, Intuition would let me set up my next cards for success. Arcane Knowledge would let me unblock one of my cards or make uh, those symbols help me, but not with fighting. 
Now give it your all during the result phase after revealing the cards, but before taking them into account, I can draw an extra card. That seems cool if I just totally miss. So let's keep that and, I don't know, get rid of Foresighted. Nice, so I got a Magic Force Field, which is an invocation. During uh, these kind of checks, fighting clearly applies. I can choose to use this during the preparation phase, so I don't have to use it every time. And it'll block one damage automatically, and then for every single one of those symbols I show in the cards I end up using, it'll block another damage. So I'm going to save that until uh, I actually get down to hitting this guy and taking damage back. So speaking of, I'm about to take five damage from going through my deck. But I checked and I can't give uh, Ellen to Denholm so Brooks can fight. But I guess I'm going to keep on going. So let's take my chances and just draw one card this time, since I've got that card that'll let me draw an extra. Ah, come on. All right, so I'm going to uh, use this to draw an extra card. Oh, wow, lucky. Awesome. But if the action succeeds, I have to discard two cards. So I did go down to his next level, which means he has four now. That means I have to discard even two more cards. But that's okay, I got this. So uh, I'm going to punch him again. I only have one card. What the hey, let's go ahead and use a drop your guard, and I'm going to draw three, which means I'm going to take five damage. That brings me down to nine, yuck. And that means I'll have this card to draw, plus I'll reshuffle my entire discard pile. Oh, you know, I forgot. I don't have to say I'm using this beforehand, but I will say I'm using Magic Force Field anticipating using drop your guard, because if I draw a lot of those symbols, I can prevent the two damage there and the two damage there. Right, so like I said, three cards. Ooh, that is yucky. Alright, so certainly not using Drop Your Guard this time, because <laughs> why would I? Although, ah, the bummer is if I take the star, I'm not getting the icon to boost the force field. So that means the force field is only stopping uh, one of the two damage I'm getting from that guy. But yeah, I'll use Second Wind to get him down to three. Now, discard both of these, uh, lose my force field, go down to seven. You know, I still get to add something to my hand. I think I'll add uh, this watch fill, because look at this. For every single icon... Oh, actually, just max one. So if I get an icon, I can use it to block one damage on this next attack. All right, well, let's go three cards again. <laughs> okay. So if I don't use my uh, drop your guard, I can only get zero stars. If I do use it, I can get one star. So yeah, I guess I'll do that. I'll uh, use those two. That gives me an icon. So he's going to two. I'm using Drop Your Guard, though, so I'm taking four damage instead of two. Oh, my gosh. But I'll discard Watchful with the one icon. That'll make it only three damage. But still, this guy is almost dead. But look, here's the really important part. I can pick one of these to go in my hand. I'm going to take Determination. And look, I can discard this during the preparation step to get a star, which I'll certainly be doing this next combat. All right, so I'll draw three cards because i got to kill this guy. I'll discard Determination. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Come on. All right, well, I defeated him, which means I don't get to keep anything. All those cards are gone. Oh, I'm tired. But he is defeated, which means uh, this will turn into its gold version. Oh, man. So the black lock means I can drop her and just, like, leave her to die, basically. Yeah, I'm thinking I might need to do that because Denholm is really hurting. He's going to go through his deck and not have enough life to reshuffle it pretty soon. He'll be unconscious. But hey, I finally got past that guy. In the dim light of the corridor, you inch your way forward using the cracks and gaps created by the succession of tremors. You walk past a half-open door on the west side and cannot suppress a shudder of fear. The room beyond it is the chamber of questions, and anyone entering it always confesses their secrets, even if they have none to hide. Enraged howls ring out from the cell across the way. Oh, crud, sickle, no! Could I have been using this the entire time? Oh my gosh. Well, let's see. I could have said I used resourceful, so that would have uh, given me... An icon to take into account, so I'll just take uh, two cards from here and shuffle them back into my deck. Ah, I feel so dumb. Well, if I lose horribly, blame it on me for getting the uh, berries of goodness. All right, so there's something to listen to. I guess those are the screams. And, oh, crud, I didn't even notice these before. Looks like that clearly means uh, to move two here. I think to move two here, not from here. I would have had to spend an extra one. Or maybe it's when we're already in there. Yeah, so I think that one would have meant when I was on that space it would have cost more. So I'll just go ahead and discard one extra card. But it looks like we can move from here for uh, free, basically. All right, so let's have us both go down, I guess. All right, Demo's got Intuition, the one that lets him look at the top cards and kind of set them up. Oh, nice. Brooks has Savior Strength. It would let her move for free and then shuffle this back into her action deck. Very good. So let's see. I guess I'll get rid of my Drop Your Guard. I don't want to take more damage. And we got more fun here. 
Right, we're going to have Brooks listen because I don't want this guy to have anything else bad happen. So we draw a 43, and the little, like, diamond kind of symbol there means that if no 43s were left in the deck, we just wouldn't draw anything. Otherwise, uh, if you can't draw a card when you need to, you uh, take all the things from the past and put them back into the game. The savage howls grow louder as you approach the cell. Your instinct tells you to not peek in. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Your mind urging you to continue forward. Time is running out, but your curiosity gets the best of you. Approaching a cell door, you stop dead in your tracks, mouth agape in horror. A prisoner wearing tattered clothes rise in the grip of some insanity, screaming and slashing at his flesh. His greenish skin is taut over a network of dark veins that are slowly dispersing black sap through his body. What the heck? Okay, so I can try to push him? Six energy. The individual resists your grasp, but you get the upper hand and throw him into the void. Take a 53 card and discard this. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, since my hand is full anyway, I'll go ahead and have Brooks do it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this before I draw to make it four. And I'll shuffle into my action deck. So I'm going to draw four cards. I need two stars, though, because of carrying Ellen. But... It looks like I'll pretty easily have it. Yes. All right, so he goes away and I get a 53. Oh, sweet. You are unleashed. Your fatigue is turned into intense anger. Immediately after this is revealed... How many... Where are the You Are Exhausted cards coming from? Oh, but look at this. Any icons can give me extra stars twice? When performing a recovery, return this. Oh, man. So until I reshuffle my deck and take the five damage, I'm going to keep on being able to use this. Which is... Flippin' perfect, because don't forget, I have second win, so I can get a bunch of my cards back into my deck to keep on going while I'm blessed. I like it. That should uh, make up for carrying the unconscious girl for a while. All right, so let's have uh, Brooks explore here. Where is Walda? You run into a prisoner crawling around, making strange little squeals. Poor man, it was the lockup that must have made him lose his mind, or perhaps he took a rock to his head. You ask him why he's not running away to safety, and he explains quite lucidly that his best friend Walda, a mouse <laughs> with an ashy coat, got scared and ran off. He begs you to help him find her. When you read the epilogue, banish this. Okay, so... If I banished a 158 card, I have not. Yeah! Sorry, buddy. Good luck. <laughs> Let's just look down here. Total chaos reigns in this corridor. Prisoners are shoving each other to reach the exit as fast as they can, as now it is survival of the fittest or the sneakiest. Okay, you must take one of the following actions. So you can either sneak or fight. Uh, so you may not notice until things calm down, or you start using your fist, feet, and elbows to fight your way through. So let's see, uh, I would need to just get one, or I could maybe heal some cards if I do that, but I think I probably will get those icons. So let's go for this one and I guess draw two cards trying to get a success. Oh man, come on. All right, so what happens? Someone shoves you to the ground and you are nearly trampled. By the way, I didn't have any icons to use my blessing. Uh, minus five cards from my deck. Oh man, and each involved character must discard a card with the keyword cumbersome. Well, yeah, okay. So Ellen, uh, sorry, you're, you're done for. And after all that time worrying about her, darn it. Three, four, five. Okay, I only have two cards left, so let's go ahead and use my uh, second wind. Well, first, I guess I need to see what uh, this card reveals. Several very agitated prisoners are standing at the top of the stairs leading out to the courtyard. You overhear a few snippets of conversation. Look at that. We can actually, like, talk to them and stuff. Interesting. All right, but first things first, I'm going to use second wind. So for each other hand card I discard, so I'll discard two. That's what I have. I get to uh, randomly take uh, two cards from my discard pile and put them back in my deck, so I'm going to get four cards back, not a ton. If I proficiency level was six, that's like leveling up you can do in the campaign later. And then this gets blocked, which means it is behind her, and she can't use it again until she uh, uses like a hope to unblock it, for example. All right, but nice thing, we can uh, both move here for free because of the effect. And huh, at least so far there's nowhere to go. But oh, the first thing we have to do is uh, this one. So we'll have uh, Brooks go in there first and uh, see what that is. A large section of a staircase has collapsed, and anyone hoping to reach the stairs leading down will now have to leap across a gaping chasm. The task seems as difficult as it is dangerous, given the broken, disjointed corpses you see lying below. Oh, man, okay. Okay, only active player may get involved in the following action. So I gotta get at least two successes with two. Uh, you land gracefully on your feet, so we can put 41. Basically, we gotta, like, jump across. Or some horribleness, we're not even gonna read that. But first, let's bring uh, Den home here, and let's talk to these guys. Several prisoners jostle each other in confusion on the landing where, just moments ago, there was a staircase leaning down to the garden. The only staircase to the garden. 
We're doomed. We're worse off than a weasel in a field of garter flowers. Shut it, Liam. You're as cowardly as you're ugly. Have you seen what's left of Mance? He was an arm's length from making it an arm's length. All right, so we can talk. This is a new thing. They have, like, these whole, like, dialogue book uh, that you can go into and read. So we're going to check it out. Banish it and read ten. You stand in the middle of the group to make sure everyone can hear you. Okay, I can be authoritative. I don't plan on dying here. Clear the way so I can get a running start. Read five. Diplomatic. Don't you think it would be wise to get out of here before the ceiling comes down on us? Read eleven. Or jokester. None of you have found a ladder by any chance. Yeah, not going to do that one. Um, I mean... <laughs> I'm Brooks, right? So I'm going to be authoritative. Zero, zero, 005. The prisoners are too worried about their own fates to bother with you. They shove you violently. Be a good lad. Move it and be quick about it. You'll be getting a lot more than a running jump. Okay, there's no willingness on their part to lend you a helping hand. Guess I should have tried a different option. Take a 27 card. All right, so there's a gold one now. The prisoners are out of ideas and their curses and lamentations soon turn to panic and scrambling despite the danger. No one seems prepared to leap across the precipice and the oldest members of the group begin considering one of the smaller lads as a volunteer for another attempt. He's too small, he won't make it. Well, we're too heavy and too old. Either he jumps or I'll throw him. Throw yourself too while you're at it. Okay, so forget those guys. All right, so here we go. Brooks is going to go first. Uh, she's still got her unleashed. And I guess she'll draw three cards just to be sure. She can keep two of them. Uh, or uh, actually, that's good. Because if I hadn't drawn three, I would not have gotten to the lucky. So uh, there we go. More than enough. So you land gracefully on your feet like a cat. Put a 41 card into play in the space shown, unless it's already there, and move your figure onto it. Okay, taking the stairs four at a time, you finally emerge into open air. You stare incredulously at the gaping hole that was torn that has torn the citadel asunder. As if swallowed by a rocky tidal wave, a huge heap of boulders has submerged a large portion of the sacred grove. Panicked prisoners scramble about through the cloud of dust. Ooh. Very different looking. Alright, Denom, you're nearly dead, but I believe in you, buddy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I forgot about this. Let's use intuition. Look at the top two cards of your action deck. For each of them and in any order, decide if you put it back on top or on the bottom, then discard this. Yes. So let's see how we're looking. Okay. So do I put it on top or bottom? I think I want things that are pure uh, successes. So let's put them both on the bottom. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So we're going to try for three. Gosh, he's almost dead. Okay. That's not good. That's not a good start. Oh, man. Okay. I don't think there's any way for me to... Make this happen. Oh my gosh. As you land on the far side of the stairs, you hear a terrible cracking sound just before an atrocious pain shoots through your body. Lose three life points. Oh man. He's alive. <laughs> Barely. Uh, put a 41 card into play. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and take a three card. Uh-oh. So I made it. Kinda. So all the cards in the bottom, like zeros to nines, are uh, condition cards. And I got a random one. There's a nasty wound. You are injured. Immediately after this is revealed, if you're already injured, take a one and return this. Okay, immediately after report, performing a recovery, uh, discard six cards. Well, that won't be happening. Um, and if I try to heal, I can get rid of this or lose a life point. Well, I don't care about uh, recovering and losing more cards because that's uh, not possible. So I'll just uh, keep this. Yay. All right, so Brooks is clearly in charge of, like, everything at the moment. Let's see what we can do. So we can map out that way or look that way. I mean, that way is further away from the stuff we've already seen, so I feel like that'll be safer. Let's try that. So it's just one card from the top of her deck. And we don't get to keep it anyway. A hot gust blows through the breach that has cleaved the Citadel's wall in two. There are only about a couple of hundred yards or so between you and freedom. You quicken your pace when a broken body crashes to the floor in front of you. A gigantic tree bristling with skulls is on a killing spree, frantically cutting down the escapees as they attempt to scale the rubble. Behind you, the cells collapse one after another, removing any possibility of retreat. Your only option is to take on the enormous clawed branches of the monstrosity standing between you and your freedom. You believe you thought the most difficult part was behind you. Four, and then six, and then four, and he's hurting us. Even when we succeed, he hurts us. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Let's see what's up here. Maybe there's like an axe or something? That would be awesome. All right, so uh, one card gone. You turn toward the garden, where, just yesterday, you were laboring to harvest Omnicura sap. You cautiously make your way forward and notice a clearly disoriented vault bush staggering about. These creatures are generally only seen in the Necrodruid residences, where they are tasked with protecting certain precious artifacts. This specimen seems to have been badly damaged by the falling rocks, given its contents strewn about nearby. Okay, the vault bush is set upon by a swarm of aggressive birds that must have smelled something tantalizing in its treasure trove. It retaliates by firing off a volley of deadly spines. You might be able to take something of the diversion. You might be able to take advantage of the diversion to find 
You might be able to take advantage of the diversion to see something of value. Okay, so I sneak forward and pick up a piece of treasure without drawing the creature's attention. Or I would get poisoned and lose a life. Oh, man. I do not think I'm good enough at sneaking. I only have one card left in my deck, which means I would not be able to take advantage of Unleash to help me succeed. Oh, my gosh. I'm just going to have to take on this guy with nothing except for Brooks's sometimes good strength. All right, whatever. Let's go for it. So I am going to uh, recover because I'm about to draw my last card. So I'll go down to 10 life. Don't forget, uh, my friend is at 1, so I don't think he'll be helping much. All right, so for the first phase of the fight, he has a four life, and we can use two cards each time we fight. And each time we fail, we'll have to uh, take one card out of our deck. And actually, I think I was wrong with the other fight. I think the hand icon always refers to the uh, fight you're in. And I have to banish a card 123. I don't even know what that means, but okay. So let's draw uh, three cards this first time. Oh, good, I got lucky. I was about to say, that would look like a terrible draw otherwise. So we'll take him down to two, but I do have to discard one card from my hand, or my deck, I mean. And I get to keep one of these. So let's see, discard one hand card you have revealed and draw, or it's action card, and draw another one instead. That's not that great. And the consequence step, you may shuffle a card you revealed into your action deck instead of discarding it. That one's decent. Or just give me an icon, which is not helping yet. I think I'll keep foresighted. And there's only one 123 card, and it's getting banished. I guess if I had, like, defeated him in that first round, I would have gotten something cool, but oh well. And actually, you know what? This first uh, set of fighting is not as desperate. So let me just do two cards at a time until I defeat it. Okay, so I got one hit, almost two. And I can keep this to block some damage. That seems good. Or I can look at the top three cards of my deck. Yeah, I'm going to keep the uh, damn, uh, defense one. So he's down to one, and I have to discard another card. Let's go one more time, just the minimum two. Okay, I got the final thing. And yes, Art of War I will certainly be using. Uh, hopefully I'll get a card that lets me actually use those to attack. I have some in my deck. Oh, the wait, Resourceful. Oh, no, I'm definitely keeping Resourceful. Never mind. Use one more card in the fight? Heck yes. So he goes down here, and he's at six now. Oh, my gosh. I can still use two cards. And I discard two cards each time they get to keep one card used in my hand. When I actually defeat him, I'll take damage. Okay. All right, so this time I guess I will draw three cards. I don't really know, man. Okay, so I can use uh, up to two of them. So that'll be two hits. Get rid of that one. Okay, I have to discard two more cards from my deck, and I get to keep one of these. So choose one card in your discard pile and add it to your hand or shuffle it into your action deck. Discard this. That seems pretty good. I think I'll keep that one. So he's down to four. All right, you know what? Heck yes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a break to use focusing. I'm still not 100% sure I can take a break while fighting, but I don't see a mandatory, so maybe. So I'm going to use this to put my Lucky back into my deck and just have another chance of uh, drawing two successes for sure. All right, I'm getting very low, which means, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't know if I'll survive this. All right, let's go ahead and draw three again, I guess. Oh, ooh, three hits. Oh my gosh, and Lucky, so darn it. Do I still have the... Uh, yeah, I think I do, right? Yeah, I do. I can use this to use all of these and just uh, destroy him in this round. Let's do that. All right, which of these do I want to keep? I mean, I'm about to shuffle my deck, so I'll keep uh, whichever one is the worst. I guess specialty. By the way, I did have an icon, so I'll uh, go ahead and discard Watchful to prevent one of the damage I'm taking from having beaten him. So he's down to his final four, but I can only do one card at a time now, and I just take one damage, so I'm down to nine. Although, you know, I don't think it even matters. Oh, gosh. Because I'm about to reshuffle my deck, which will put me down to uh, four life, which means that uh, two hits from failing here will kill me anyway. Ah, darn it, darn it, darn it. Ooh, ooh, ooh I forgot. Uh, foresight. During the consequences step, you may shuffle a card you revealed uh, into your action deck instead of discarding. Let's get that lucky back in my deck again. Yes. And I also like getting rid of things in my hand, because then there'll be more cards uh, in my deck for fighting again. All right, so let's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, go ahead and draw two cards for my first fight. Come on. Okay, I got lucky. That's good. So uh, I take two damage. So I'm down to seven, although I remember I'm about to shuffle again. But he's down to two. And I get to keep a card. And save your strength won't help at all. But lucky I want to get shuffled back in, so I guess I'll take save your strength. All right, you know what? Let's get uh, Denholm in the fight, right? Because uh, Brooks will be defeated if she gets hit again. Uh, so let's have uh, Denholm attack first, see if he can weaken him. 
Actually, let's see. He's got five cards left. What if I use his force field, which might let me cancel the damage? Oh, is this dumb? Is this dumb? It's probably dumb, but I'm going to use three cards to do force field. So I need uh, three stars, and yes, more than enough. So I get to keep one card in my hand, and I get the force field back. Oh, awesome! I'm going to keep determination, yes! All right, so here we go. I'm going into a fight with my magic force field. I'm using determination. I'm drawing a single card, because I think if I draw the other one, I have to immediately reshuffle. Oh, let me check real quick in the rules. Okay, nope, I checked, and you only have to do a recovery when you can't draw anymore, or like when you would have to draw and can't. So I can use both these cards, looking for something good. I've got a free star, I just need to get one from here, and I can block damage if I don't. Let's do it. No! No, come on! <laughs> oh, I got, I got a shieldy thingy. Uh, okay, so he won't get hurt. He won't, he won't die, because uh, I've got one shield automatically, plus one more. He gets to keep one card in his hand, so determination is gone. Uh, the magic force field will be gone. Will either of these help uh, Brooks as she fights? No, they won't. But hey, it's okay. He did his job. He got this guy down to one life, and um, he prevented himself from dying, so they're both still here. Brooks has got two cards left. Oh, she's currently got seven life. Oh man, but will we, like, automatically move? Okay, okay, okay. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do one at a time, because she can take the damage, and it won't matter until she has to shuffle. So, okay, first one. Come on, give me a hit, give me a hit. Okay, no. So we're taking two damage, but we can keep this in our hand, so we can automatically get a hit for the next one. So, boom, we will... Okay, we're not dropping our guard, but that'll give us the one hit. So we are down to five life. We have zero cards in both our characters' decks. And if either of them has to reshuffle, they die. So, oh man, let's, uh, let's hope... What do we even do now? Oh, 51. Okay, so we're going to get card 51. Okay. The tree recoils, folding up its long, gnarled branches into a sort of protective cocoon. You hesitate for a precious second, fearing a ruse, but the abomination remains immobile. It seems as if you have defeated it. Hurrah! The survivors cheer you, raising their makeshift weapons and fists in support. Hurrah again! <laughs> Three cheers. With one last effort, you clamber up the mound of rubble that stands between you and escape. Oh, cool, so we don't have to use any energy. So we both survived. I cannot believe this. Congratulations, you have emerged victorious from this introduction to the Seventh Citadel. Open the introductory scenario entitled A New Beginning to the page indicated by the bookmark and read the epilogue. Oh, man. Yeah, let me just show you this. So she had a savior strength and a specialty. Actually, I guess if we would have had to move, she could have used that to do so for free. She has uh, the necklace, the dormant strength. I mean, there's no way we had seven of those. Those are only going to happen in the real scenario, I guess. The dead home coming out of the cut to save the day with his fourth field. He's injured. Uh, do or die. Yeah, we had to have, what was it? More than 20 life? Get out of here. <laughs> uh, his blood ties didn't come in. He had some cards in his hand. Oh, man. All right, let's read this epilogue. You emerge from the ruins of the Citadel, leading a small group of haggard survivors, looking at a world awaiting to be rebuilt. For the first time in as long as you can remember, you look across the desolate land stretching beyond the wall of the Citadel. Behind you, the floor of your cell collapses with a deafening crash. Like ghosts, the last of the prisoners emerge from the Citadel. You have no idea what awaits in the world before you, but whatever it is, you will face it in freedom. Okay, so we discard everything from the board. Unconscious characters regain consciousness. Ha! We are live. Uh, each player shuffles the cards they have in hand and in the discard pile in their action deck and unblocks the cards we just uh, totally heal. Over the last few hours following your escape, you have regained your strength. When you awaken from sleep, a multitude of emaciated faces look at you, hopefully, as if expecting you to take charge. Gazing out beyond the crowd of survivors, you notice that the sky is clear. The clouds of dust that usually betray the pernicious actions of the burrowers seem to have disappeared. Could it be that the conflict has reached a turning point? If so, the surrounding land should be safe enough for you to explore it and search for some answers. However, it would be suicide to set off without preparation or equipment. You need to get organized. Clearing your throat, you prepare to speak to the crowd, but nothing comes out. Who are you to command these people? Oh my gosh, okay, so state of play, survivors. More than a hundred prisoners managed to escape from the Citadel. So these are like little resources we'll mark on our civilization-like chart. I'll show you that in a second. We're going to name our fellowship, take a 99 card. Oh, and man, if we had saved that 123 card, we would have gotten it. Instead, we're going to get minus one a barrel to start. Uh, if we had Ellen, we would have gotten that. Ratkin, or Ratko, we didn't even see that card. So I was kind of right about the 99s. Uh, hope or born. The fruits of your actions are beginning to be felt in the world around you and in yourself. Check one box on the Destiny page of the Citadel leaflet and apply its effect, and then block this. I'll show you that in a second as well. 
Several weeks have passed. Under the destroyed canvases piled up against the ramparts and in the gutted alcoves, the survivors approach their breaking point, torn apart by tension and hunger. They need hope, a promise of a better tomorrow, as well as tasks to occupy their hands and minds. Above all, they need something to fill their bellies. From the ruins of a citadel, you salvage the materials needed to set up a makeshift camp. Right in the middle of the sacred grove, you begin planting a vegetable garden that will, hopefully, soon provide an abundance of fruit and vegetables. What a sweet irony is that necro-druids had forbidden their consumption. Building, sewing, instructing, not a day passes without you and your people being consumed by this vast undertaking. Little by little, hope is reborn. Okay, so we get back all our 99 cards, we get rid of any negative effects. At the end of another day's work, you contemplate what has been accomplished, what you have accomplished. Protected by a defensive embankment, the dwellings extend well beyond the citadel's walls. Soon, the common room will be filled with lively conversation and children's laughter. All of this in little more than a year. As the last rays of sunshine disappear, you have to face the reality that, in spite of all you have achieved and the lives that you have saved, this is a tenuous victory. Living like this by scavenging the remains of your former prison is not sustainable. The reality is that some of your people have been captive far too long to ever fully embrace freedom again. The first expeditions made it possible to scout and secure the surrounding territory, but the meager resources no longer meet the needs of your ever-expanding community, swollen by births and the arrival of too many refugees. Since your escape, you have kept watch on the horizon, wondering about the reasons for such upheavals, pondering what lies beyond and what might emerge from them. You are drawn to the building, standing out at nightfall into the tiny light shimmering in the depths of the night. There is life out there, a world to be discovered and lifted from the rubble. Once again, it falls to you to be the initiator. Tomorrow, with the help of a few volunteers, you will venture further than ever before, discovering the world's many mysteries and sleepy secrets. Take a 142 card and put it where it belongs on the world map. When you're ready to set off on a new adventure, choose another threat booklet from those available. Alright, so first up, this is the destiny chart that they had said we had gained one of. And uh, we have to start here, so we're going to gain a reflex card, which is like a little level up card to make our decks better, replacing a card in our deck. But then from there, we can expand out however we want, leveling our characters up better, making our uh, settlement stronger, uh, doing lots of cool things. We can even explore the map. And speaking of the map, here's some of it. I guess this is the spot we just got to fill in. Look at this, man. We can, like, build buildings to upgrade our settlement as we go along and unlock special powers. Like, oh, this seems so expansive and crazy. And then this is our fellowship board, so you'll see uh, we start with a little bit of defense and knowledge and influence from rescuing the people, but our production went down because we didn't defeat the tree fast enough. Uh, proficiency is kind of like our leveling up, and it'll make some of the cards in our deck more effective. Uh, so, yeah. Cool stuff, man. Very cool. Now, I did want to leave without showing this. This is like an actual like rollout map you'll have, and you can put uh, locations in as you explore. Did I put that in the right spot? Yeah, it looks like I did, I think, right? Yeah, so uh, you'll, like, slowly explore the lands, and then it said yeah, in the rules you can even eventually, like, start on other locations, so you don't have to go out from the same place each time. So you are, like, mapping out a shattered world. Oh, man, this is cool. So, yeah, uh, that was the Seventh Citadel, just the introductory scenario. That's all they sent me. If you'd like to hear my thoughts so far on what I've played, click the link that just popped up, and go check out the Kickstarter, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.